Hello and welcome to my meditation. My name is Deborah Baker and I am so delighted that you have joined me today. Uh, if you are tuning in on the day this was released, it is November 1st, which is the Day of the Dead. And um, <clears throat> a day when, you know, supposedly we communicate with loved ones on the other side. So I was going to record this meditation with a different theme, but it came to me this morning as I was carrying my tripod out to the backyard that I need to do messages from loved ones who have passed away. So let's begin with our three deep breaths. Breathe a little more deeply the second time and breathe out a little more slowly. And once more, really, really deeply. Yeah. Let's begin by relaxing our bodies, beginning with our toes and our feet and our ankles, just kind of you know, clench them up a little bit and release them. Move up to your lower legs, your knees, your upper legs. Kind of tighten the muscles for a moment and then let them go. Um, I have to tell on myself. I recorded an entire message before this and didn't have my microphone turned on. <laughs> so, in case you're, unless you're really good at reading lips, um, it was pretty much useless, so here we are, take two. And the irony is, and at the end of the previous meditation I talked about, or somewhere in it, I talked about we can plan actions, but we can't plan results. So I, it is my hope that this meditation is better than the one that I just tried to record. So notice now your legs being completely relaxed and feel that relaxation move into your pelvis, you know, to kind of tighten some of your muscles around your pelvis and then let them go and then your middle torso and then your um, rib cage. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to rock you around there. And then do your hands, clench your hands, and then let them relax. Uh, your, your wrists, your lower arms, your elbows, your upper arms. Maybe pull your arms close to your body and let them relax. Pull your chest in, maybe your, your shoulder blades back. The idea is we're just kind of activating these muscles to increase the blood flow so then they can relax. Um, now bring your head up a little forward and then bring your chest down. It stretches, better stretches the back of your neck. And then tilt it back just a little to stretch your front of your neck. And your neck to one shoulder, or your ear to one shoulder, and then your other ear to the other shoulder. And just allow your whole body to relax and let go. And so I, I feel that I need to give a, a, an explanation of uh, channeling or, or my perception of it. Um, although, you know, everybody, everybody gets the idea of talking to dead people. And, and most of us know someone by this time in our lives who, have passed, who has passed away that we would like to hear from. But I would, uh, my understanding is we are, before we come into these human lives, we are one with the infinite. So we are, we are in this oneness. I like to think of heaven as oneness, where there's no separation. And we feel, you know, that sense of community in, in just the biggest way. And unconditional love and acceptance. And then we decide to come in and have a human life. And so part of our soul, because our souls are so massive, part of it stays in the oneness, in the collective unconscious. 
and, and part of it comes in and occupies these human bodies. So we come in with kind of a plan, with, with an outline, I feel like. Some people call it karma or a contract. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it, but my sense is that we have an idea when we, before we come in of what we would like to experience in these human lives. I, I don't see it as lessons anymore. The, less, the idea of lessons seems like a punishment. Why, why would you be in the infinite and then come to learn a lesson which you already know when you're in the infinite? Um, but having experiences and, and being able to love someone and you know and, and as we go through life and we have experiences of course we learn things so we come in and we get a body we receive a body we receive a personality that we've agreed to we we uh, when we are in the infinite we we have a, a you know a discussion with <laughs> the powers that be uh, what personality would best suit me to to help me to have the experience I want to have? And then we we work with these personalities, you know, kind of unconsciously when we are children, just trying to figure out how to navigate this human experience. And, and as we get older, we figure out that we are infinite souls, and and we. Um, you know, have experiences. We, we love people. We, we experience loss and, and all sorts of things. You know, we experience love and joy and connection. <sighs> so, at the end of these lives, then, the way, the way I see it is we go back to the infinite. We go back to the oneness. And... Um, we leave the bodies behind and we leave the personalities behind. So when someone like me um, goes to channel someone uh, who has passed away, they take on enough of their human personality so that we can recognize them. Uh, so, you know, my mother used to make a lot of jokes. So when she first started coming in, she would make jokes, and uh, you know it, it was to help us to recognize that it really was her. And then after a while, or it was she. Uh, after a while, she became, to me anyway, more and more of her infinite soul, and less and less of that human personality. And she taught me such a valuable lesson about who and what we really are. So when I channel someone, they, they want to give us a gift. They always want to let us know that they, love, that they love us. So as I was setting up my tripod, um, I heard the name Hazel, which is the grandmother of a dear friend of mine. And I met Hazel maybe a couple of times. She was very, very sweet. And she wanted to, you know, have a moment to, to talk. And she said, um, says, Tamara, it's, I'm so proud of you, and I love all of you so much, and um, I just want you to remind you to surround yourself with good people, with people who care about you, people who love you and um, support you in being who you are and having the experiences that you want to have. I think Hazel brings up a really important idea, which is to, round, to res, surround ourselves with, with people and uh, groups that support us, that love us, um, that um, are aligned with us. I know there are some people who like to debate and like to, you know, have this intellectual whatever. And if that's what you like, great. I, it's not something I care for, really. I, I prefer to be around people who um, are just loving souls, you know, people who are kind and supportive and, and uh, want to 
be God expressing here on earth and to whom I can express my infinite soul freely without fear of criticism or uh, dismissal or it being ignored. Yeah, so a lot, if you have to make a lot of effort, spend, expend a lot of effort to find common ground with someone, I suggest you find someone else to, to have conversations with. Because, uh, you know, finding common ground is, is exhausting. <sighs> so my dad would like to um, just tell everyone uh, how proud he is of me. And um, he, he says, Deb, I'm so proud that you are continuously trying to learn new things and to expand your understanding of God, of who and what God is. And, you know, I've shared many times about I, that I'm a member of the 12-step program, and one of the very important things to me about the 12 steps is they support, condone a God of your understanding. So they don't try to tell you who or what God is. And, and I don't either. I, thoroughly encourage you to have the God of your understanding and if there is some aspect of the God that I understand that supports you I'm, I'm grateful and the last message is from Rob who is the husband of a dear friend of mine who passed away recently and he just wants me to tell her how much he loves her and how much he appreciated everything she did for him, that she gave him a reason to, to be. And she was uh, just the joy of his life and made such a huge difference to him. And he, he wants her to know that. And I feel like Rob is also saying a universal truth is that you don't know how much of an impact you're having on someone's life. I encourage you to just look around and see the people who are glad when you're there. You know, when you arrive. You know, it's like the, the, old, the theme song from the old uh, sitcom Cheers um, where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. Look around and notice the people who are glad you came because I guarantee there are far more of those than you realize. And when we reach the end of our human experiences and we return to the oneness, you talk about people glad we came. We are greeted with unconditional love and acceptance. So I invite you to know that that unconditional love and acceptance is there for you always. They're always sending you love and acceptance and support. And they're so proud of you and grateful that you remember them. So the infinite soul expressing in through and as me honors and recognizes and loves you and the infinite soul expressing in through and as you. And so do the ducks. <laughs> Nam or geese. Namaste.